our next speaker, the Reverend Madison Shockley. Good afternoon, everyone. I like Kevin's phrase, equal love, equal rights. Equal love, equal rights. Equal love, equal rights. I am very, very glad to be here this afternoon to stand with you as you seek the right to marry equally as any other human being because it is a fundamental human right. I come here to stand with you not in spite of my faith but as Mary Sue just said because of my faith. I've been a Christian since 1975 and in those 30 plus years, I've been a minister since 1976. And in those 30 plus years, I've never quite understood why these other folk have put so much energy in preventing people from simply doing what Jesus said, and that is to love one another. These so-called Christians who want to say that we now, in 2009, must go back 5,000 years and conform to the biblical definition of marriage, don't know what they're talking about. When we read the Bible, you might find any number of forms and relationships that are referred to as marriage. And not all of them are anything that most of us in 2009 would want to participate in. We don't want to participate in marriages where one person is given like a piece of property from one family to another in exchange for a goat. We don't want to participate in a marriage that what? subjugates one partner it, to the I dominance the and end. oppression okay, of I another have. partner. We don't want to participate oh in marriages the, um, that are built on yeah, relationships for political convenience yeah. Yeah. and not the true love yeah. of yeah. two yeah. persons. Uh, Marriage has changed any number of ways in these last 5,000 years of human history and to go backwards is simply stupid. Yeah. We are a forward-looking people and this is a forward-looking time and we are so glad that we have arrived at a moment in which we can stand here and say that we have not only attended but officiated at marriages of same gender loving couples and know that they are a full part of our faith community and we're struggling for them to be a full part of our civic community. So when I look at my faith, I ask myself, self, what would Jesus do? And I turn to my Bible and I look for what Jesus said about this issue. And there, right there in the Gospel of Matthew, no, there's nothing there. Oh, oh right there in the Gospel of Mark, no, there's nothing there either. Oh, no, it must be the Gospel of Luke. No, there's nothing in the Gospel of Luke. Oh, it's got to be the Gospel of John. No, Jesus said nothing about this, even in the Gospel of John. But what Jesus did say is to love your neighbor as yourself. And as I want the freedom to choose the person that I love and to choose the person that I marry, I want that for my neighbors. Jesus also said, that the people that were supposed to come to God's party were all too busy doing other things. And so we who are followers of Jesus are commanded to go out into the highways and the byways and bring everybody in to God's banquet of life. And in God's banquet of life on that table are all the good things that we seek to enjoy, including marriage. And so as I read my Bible, when I am compelled to go out and invite everyone in to enjoy God's banquet of life, it includes the right to marry freely and to marry equally. And so I stand with you 
not in spite of my faith, but because of my faith. And we at the Pilgrim United Church of Christ in Carlsbad are fully committed to making this the reality of this culture, this country, and this world. I'd rather stand with you today than kneel at their altars of hate, their altars of segregation, their altars of discrimination. I'd rather stand with you in the light of God than to pray with them for the things that they seek. That's for my Christian colleagues. Now for my American citizen colleagues. As I took civics, as everyone else did in elementary and junior and senior high, I always thought that America was about freedom. I always thought America was about equality. I always thought that the government was to be restrained from interfering in my life. As long as I'm born to live freely and to live equally and to do as our own conscience and our own desire and our own vision of what life means to us to pursue it fully. The pursuit of happiness belongs to all of us. The government should not interfere or intervene with whom we choose to love and with whom we choose to marry. But the government should intervene when we decide to hate and when we decide to fight against others' right to live freely. And so with this, this law that has been passed, DOMA has to be repealed because it is the most homophobic law on the books. Now a lot of people ask, well where was all the hoopla about divorce? That's the greatest threat to marriage and everyone acknowledges that. Well there was a lot of hoopla when the divorce laws were liberalized. And the hoopla was very much the same in this regard. They were afraid that if divorce laws were liberalized, that the people in their own pews would take full advantage of those opportunities to escape from bad marriages. And their fears were fulfilled. Their own members in their own pews took full advantage of that law. So today, they are opposing equal marriage. Why? Because they are afraid that if their members in their own pews have the opportunity to choose whom they love, they might take advantage of that equal marriage law. But isn't that what homophobia is? The fear. The fear that someone might live and love as they were created to live and love. And that's what they are afraid of, that their own members might take advantage of this law if it stays on the books. And so we stand here to get today together, that all people might live freely in the future and not live in bondage in the past. So let's go forward with equal rights and equal love and equal love and equal rights. God bless you. Reverend Madison Chapley of the United Church of Christ. Thank you very much, Reverend.